Shannon asking a very similar question to um, the earlier question about how do I stop being addicted to him? I keep going back. Okay, great question. So I have this theory, okay? So I, um, I, the video that I'd like for you to watch, I think will really help with this. And it's uh, Red Flags of Codependency, video, and it's labeled like video number one, and it's love bombing. In that video, I talk a lot about empty buckets. I talk a lot about kind of why people go back. That whole video series really is, it, I think, anybody that's going through these narcissistic relationships can really benefit a lot from from it. Um, even if you don't identify as being codependent, I think the series is still really worth going through because it'll, it, it's a lot of very similar topics. So my theory on being addicted to these kinds of people is these relationships are very intense. And so I have a theory that's called empty buckets, okay? And it's basically that we all come into this life with three empty buckets. We have an empty bucket of physical needs, the empty bucket of emotional needs, and then the empty bucket of uh, stability, which is just really the reassurance that the other two buckets are going to be getting met on or filled on a predictable, regular basis. So if these buckets run low, okay, and it, it happens. These buckets need to be refilled continually throughout the day. And because they're they're being drained throughout the day. It's just kind of our it's really kind of just our natural life force energy that's filling and, and being used, right? So um if these buckets are not filled for whatever reason, especially as children, then we're walking around with low or empty buckets in some area so but these empty these buckets can get emptied at any time okay so let me give you some examples if a child um let's say you know if, if your parents work all the time right and um or let's say parents are mentally ill or parents are personality disordered right so there's or parents are addicts or alcoholics for whatever reason, the child and the parents are not bonding effectively, okay? They're going to most likely feel very starved out in that emotional bucket area. So they're going to probably be walking around feeling at some level unloved and unimportant. Because, and again, everybody's different. Everybody processes things differently. But that's a very common way to process that if a child's not able to effectively bond to their parent or vice versa or the child is trying to bond but the parents for whatever reason are not able to right and um so if we're walking around feeling unloved or unimportant we come across somebody who's incredibly intense they're this emotional manipulator right and they do a lot of this love bombing it's a lot of this over the top kind of stuff and even if even if it's not even if it's not to that ex extent if it's they're very you know quote unquote controlling where they want to see you all the time and they want to be around you that can be it's the same kind of feeling it's feeling important even though it's feeling important in a really like not healthy way so um it's hard to leave a situation when we're getting our needs met even though they're being met in an unhealthy way so this is why i think it's really helpful for people like i was just talking about to really get a good social circle in place where you're not relying on this one person for everything, right? Where you've got you're, you've got hobbies, you've got friends, you're getting out there, you're building a life that you enjoy. That is probably the easiest and funnest way to set yourself free from this relationship because it's weird. Like when we're when we're trying to get a need met right so like we're clinging on to this toxic relationship for dear life and we're having a hard time moving forward it's weird like our brain almost like develops this attitude of scarcity where it only sees that person as a solution it's kind of the same thing when we're really hungry right so if you've ever been on a road trip 
for example, right? And you're driving along and you have not eaten in like three or four hours. You're really, really hungry. Um, odds are you're going to stop at the next place that even remotely looks promising. Even though, let's say it's like, you know, an Arby's or a McDonald's or someplace and you don't you don't like Arby's or McDonald's, but you're like, you know what, I better I better stop here because if I don't eat now, I don't know when I'm going to be able to eat next, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere, right? It's and it's weird, but it's very similar with dating. So if we don't, if our perception is that we don't have a lot of options, right? Or that we're, we've isolated ourselves or they've isolated us to where we don't have that many friends. We don't have any hobbies. We've made them our whole world. It's really hard to let go of your whole world, right? So it's a lot easier to move forward after you've built up a world where you, you, you know, and like your brain knows, okay, we're going to be okay. We're going to survive. We're getting our needs met in this other way and we've got things going on life does go on you can develop more of an attitude of abundance after your those buckets are being filled in a more positive way so i would definitely recommend doing that part this is one of the i mean meetup.com i just you know i'm not sponsored by them i should be <laughs> but i'm not but i'm not they are a fantastic website for this Join, join like 20 groups, no joke. Join as many groups that look even remotely interesting and start getting out there, start doing things. You never know who you're going to meet. And um, two of my, actually four, four of my really good friends are from Meetup. And interestingly enough, two of those friends of mine, um, they've been doing this, Meet. they started co-hosting this Meetup together and I just adore them. Well, now they're dating, happily dating. They just moved in together. They will probably get married. Like, they, and they are the best couple ever. And they met each other. We go to a like a food meetup, so it's different dining places. And um, so, I mean, whatever you're interested in, there's probably a meetup group for it. And if there's not, you can always start one. But. I would say get out there. Another thing that really does help is it's called, I call it a um, for when you miss him or her list. And so on this list, you write out in a bullet point format so it's easy to scan and read every rotten thing, why this relationship is toxic. So everything that this person has done, they lied about the text messages, they, um, you know, said that they uh, were divorced and they weren't, they were still married. They, he said he was, you know, um, I mean, fill in the blank, right? So you, you just keep filling in everything that he did that's painful. And so then when nostalgia kicks in, which is not really nostalgia, it's actually cognitive dissonance, right? When cognitive dissonance kicks in, and it feels like nostalgia, pull out that list and read it. And the goal of that list is to snap you awake and realize, oh, right, like, that's why I can't go back. And then to ideally, after you realize that, to go find something to go do. So watch a comedy, um, call a friend, get out of the house, go do something else instead of obsessing and fixating on him but remember it's all a game this is all a game to them and i think you know go oh support groups are huge so i have two um i have one on facebook one on my website my website was that i ugh, i've had issues this whole past week with it but um assuming that you can get to my website and everything is still good my website is thriveafterabuse.com. You can find the support group there and um, talking to people when you are tempted, when that nostalgia does kick in and you're, you're, you find, you're finding yourself minimizing the bad and glorifying the good to go into the support group and to let people know I'm having a really low time. I'm really missing this person right now. Um, somebody talk some sense into me, please. And there's people there that will. So 
those are some other uh, some other ideas. But that addictive feeling really does come from he is meeting a need in your life. But if you can get that need filled in healthier ways, you're going to stop feeling so addicted to him. Lots of love to you guys. You are not alone. You are not crazy. And you really can move forward and heal from this.